Welcome to day five of the Marble Machine flywheel prototype. Today, we're going to build a giant clock. So this clock will show how accurate this can play timing wise. So this meter will move around one revolution per bar. And this is the whole measuring device. It's going to go on on this shaft right here, like this. Before assembling the clock, we need to make the pedal safe. Currently, if my foot gets under the pedal, the heavy flywheel will cut it clean off. It's super dangerous to pedal this now. So we're taking the pedal off the machine and we're adding these sides, which will prevent my foot from being able to slip underneath it. When the flywheel is spinning really quickly, I would like a way to break it. So this is a very simple little break. It took me kind of five minutes to cut this and I just made a hole in the frame right here to pivot it on. And I think this kind of shows what you can do with a laser cut square tubing frame that you can just include all the features you need for simple functionalities like this. Since the flywheel is adjustable sideways like this, I needed also to make the brake adjustable so the brake wouldn't hit the bolts. So that's why there's five holes. So probably on the real machine, if this is going where I think it will go, live, there will be like three people powering it up before the song. Already now, which is a very low setting, even if I stand on the pedal, it, I can't accelerate faster than this. So this wheel will be 20 times stronger than uh, on the Marble Machine X. Let's try to crank it up a little bit. Okay, two much. <laughs> Okay, this, okay, seriously, I know this sounds like an excuse. This is not birch plywood. I'm used to design with birch plywood and I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, well, that's how the brake should work. We're gonna make a stronger one and it will work like that. So now let's get to the fun part, the timing clock. Okay, here's the clock. And I was thinking about how to put the arm onto the shaft and of course, tapered bushing, which is the theme of this design. In day two, we lathered this part on the small lathe in the machine shop, and we achieved a really, really nice tolerance. 42.07 on this one, and this one is just 41.92. When I tighten this down, the tapered bushing will grip the edge. This is how it's going to work. The clock arm will show us the timing. And when it hits something like that, it will give us a point to measure on. So the thing I need to attach now is the contact microphone here and connect it to the computer, and then we'll give it a quick go. The prototype is really coming together and it's almost where we can start the real test. So when this clock arm is spinning, it will hit this contact microphone I just attached one time per revolution, like that. So I wanna show you the whole powertrain now when everything comes together. Here we have the pedal. So here's the power input, which is the pedal. And if we come around here, we have a link from the pedal going up to the pulley. And from the pulley, we have a belt going down on the other side of the flywheel to a smaller pulley. And these pulleys were made by a super nice machine shop called Tutele. I sent them only a 2D drawing and they machined these pulleys in different sizes. And this is important because the smaller size of the flywheel pulley, the faster the pulley will spin, just like a bike gear, and the more moment of inertia we will have. And the setting we have tried so far is the biggest one, which is the slowest one, which is the least moment of inertia. During the test, I will test the different gears and if I want the flywheel to go faster, I'll take a smaller pulley like this. The flywheel in itself is actually only half the weight right now. Uh, one hand is looking good. <laughs> the 
other half is actually here. And as you can see here, we need to do some lathing in this ID right here. So the max setting of this prototype will be the smallest pulley and both of these wheel ons at the same time. And at that point, it's 20 times stronger than the flywheel on the Mar Machine X. This plywood really sucks. However, Anju the guitars and Connor designed a metal brake. So if we check this beauty out, when I want to brake the flywheel, I just do that. Okay, so we have the flywheel going, and I'm breaking it here. Awesome. Yes, yes. Well done, Carlos. Thank you so much. <laughs> well done, Connor. <laughs> High five. The full powertrain starts with the pedal, goes into the pulley, the power comes here, into the flywheel, which evens it out, and comes back to the pulley. And then along this shaft, and on the other side of the clock is where the magic happens. So this shaft is rotating this thing. And now we're actually ready to test it. Here's a contact microphone, and when it touches, it makes a sound through this cable. It goes to the preamp of the contact microphone, then through this XLR. It goes over to the audio interface here, and we record the signal to the computer. I'm going to try a quick little test with 80 BPM just to see uh, how it goes. This is not the real test, this is just to test the rig. I need to slowly get the two beats in time. I'm too slow, so I need to enter a little bit more force. This is pretty nice. And then, just like you've seen before, I can go ahead and analyze. Uh, it's, it's not tight anywhere. I can already tell that this kind of tempo fluctuations it's just not going to play tight music, but no worries so far, because as I've said 100 times already, we don't have the maximum amount of moment of inertia yet. I have only one more building day, and then I can do the real tests. It's been so much fun building together with everyone. Everyone are helping out, and I'm really having so much fun. Today, we've been listening to the same song the whole day. I'm gonna show you what it is. Like the whole day we've been hearing a specific melody over and over again. Listen to this. What can that be? Hmm. They made the Marble Machine X play the Marble Machine song. Ellie, you've been part of the team actually fixing the Marble Machine X. I, no one is more surprised than me. Like, how did you do it? <laughs> A lot of time spent on, on just fixing small issues, hidden issues around the machine and trying to get info from the videos and, and see what we had to invent from there and, and to finish the machine. Basically. It sounds really easy. Was it easy? There were a few hard times sometimes when info wasn't that obvious from the get-go. There was some stuff that we had to figure out ourselves. Some stuff you was pretty clear in your videos. I'm blown away, impressed by you and the whole team 
All the marble gates are on. The whole marble lifting wheel is new because they wanted the diameter to be smaller to avoid the stuffing in the channel here. This whole transition is brand new. This whole transition is brand new. Here's some safety buckets or <laughs> something, I don't know. So we swapped uh, from the very airy um, marble tracks back to this one because this one seemed to work quite a bit better. And if we walk around here... Nessie. Nessie. Sometimes I'm called the Loch Ness monster, uh, but this is the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> Nessie is here. So we have Ellie and also Margaret, who's been on the team fixing the Marble Machine X to play the Marble Machine song. The thing that I'm wondering the most is, do you understand why I let go of this machine? 100%. Okay, yes. <laughs> you too? We're a bit angry that you did still, but yes, we understand. <laughs> well, why? We see that it can work. It depends on what you ask of it. And moving the goalpost of a project requires to redesign things. And if a part works for certain conditions, then asking it to do an imp impossible task is a bit mean for the part because it can't solve an issue that it wasn't designed to do. And I hope that is, for instance, something that you can learn from this so that this machine is not a failure for mm -hmm. you, but that you realize that you have to think what you want while designing the piece and that you do not be disappointed in a piece if it can't fulfill more than you intended in the beginning. For us, it was um, obvious why this machine would not go on a world tour. And if the goal is the world tour, then we are 100% understanding why you are not finishing this. But depending on what you want, it's a lot of work. Uh, but in, with compromises, uh, we have managed something, I would say. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And walking onto a stage with this machine in front of 15,000 people, uh, no. <laughs> I'm just so impressed. I just want to say thank you so much to you and everyone in the team that is not here now for taking care of, of my baby. And uh, I haven't been involved at all. They have just run with it. And it uh, has been like so amazing to see. So from the bottom of my heart, thanks for taking care of the Marble Machine X. Well done. Well done. Yes, yes well done. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting really close to the real tests and uh, we're gonna keep on building so see you tomorrow for day six say bye everyone <laughs> bye now <laughs> say i fully understand morgan's decision to abandon the mmx <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>